What is going on, you guys? It's your boy Avery here, and welcome to my Georgia Regional Debt Profile. We're just doing this in one take because I literally just got back. I'm exhausted. I'm salty. We bubbled out, but I want to profile it anyway. I might even send this to Robbie Cole. I don't know if he'll cover it or not because my ass bubbled out, but you know what? That's the life of Yu-Gi-Oh! for you. So make sure you smash the everything crap out of that subscribe button. Help me feel better. Help me get to 1,000 subscribers. So let's go ahead and dive into the rounds and our matchups before we get into the deck profile. So obviously, as you can see, I played Flunderies, the deck that loses to hand traps the hardest in this freaking shitty format. <laughs> um, it was seven rounds with 127 people, which was really surprising. Shout out to Arkham Games and Comics for their first ever regional. It was a pretty good one, despite the fact that I bubbled. Um, and yeah, it was at the Kerbo Regional Center, which was a college uh, if you're not familiar with the area, it's basically nowhere around uh, Bainbridge. So, yeah, the, like Bainbridge, it's like in the middle of nowhere. Anyway, round one, we drove over 200 miles to play against our homie Jeremy Mitchell, who's also uh, a homie here in Jacksonville, a native. Um, but that I'm, I'm joking. Shout out to you, Jeremy. Uh, we had a good match. I just I pretty much bricked game one, especially, and game two. Um, so he pushed our shit in with Sword Soul. Round two, we played against Plunder Patrol and 2 0'd him. That was actually our only 2 0 of the day. All of our other games went to three games. Um, so rounds three and four were Sword Soul that we won. Uh, round four, actually, against the Sword Soul guy, I opened up D Shifter every single game, which was really funny. Round five, we played against Base, went to three games, and I won. At one point, I activated Pot of Prosperity, banished six, and three of the cards that I hit off Prosperity were all D shifters. So I'm like, oh, well, this is going to happen eventually today. We ended up winning that. And then uh, the last two rounds, round six and seven, uh, we played against Branded. And we actually played against Cody Angeloff, round six, which I didn't realize until after the fact that I was looking at the um, round pairings. And I saw I played Dakota Angeloff. I'm like, oh, shit, I played against Cody Angeloff. So I actually took him to three games, and I actually made a busted-ass board game three, and the only reason why he won was because he opened up Zombie World. Had he not done that, I would have beaten him. That would have been very impressive for uh, for me, uh, considering that I've never been able to beat a pro player like that, um, other than Carl Lippmann many years ago when I played Cosmo and topped with that. Um, and then we played against uh, Branded Adventure DP Despia uh, last round. Really feel like I should have won that game. I feel that I, I just... I, I don't know. The guy was really shady. I feel like he stacked me. I feel like my prosperities are a bit bent, too. I feel like from him cutting my deck that he may have bent my prosperities, which really pisses me off. I was really tempted to call a judge about it, but I didn't want to get banned from all future events because it you know, looked like I'm trying to rule shark or something. So um, when you look at my prosperities, let me know if they look bent to you. It might be hard to tell on a camera, but I was looking at them, and I'm thinking that they might be a little bent. So with all that out of the way, let's dive on into this deck profile so the quicker we can get through this quicker i can sell this shitty deck i'm going to be completely honest so we're playing three of this piece of shit um yeah it's it's a stratos and then we're playing three of his older brother who's a dickhead <laughs> um searches your high levels robina searches your low levels if you're not playing three of each i don't know what you're doing um yeah and then we're playing one copy of Stree, one copy of Toucan, and one copy of DD Crow. Um, I like DD Crow over a second Stree because this allows me to interact with the opponent on their turn. I, one time today, used this to hit a Despian Tragedy whenever they try to use Brandon and Red. I'm just like, nah, fuck you, you don't get a Brandon and Red. Um, so it was there when I needed it. It's also searchable off Robina in case like I don't have any other targets. So it's it's there when I needed it. I wouldn't really change it out. Uh, one storm winds. We're only playing one. It it was fine. It does what it needs to do. This this gets droplitted like a fuck ton. Even even uh, <laughs> it's funny because it even gets chalice. Like one time this got chalice. That I'm pretty sure it got chalice. I'm like get the fuck out of here. Like Robina and Eaglin. It's funny because like Robina seems to attract imperm. Eaglin seems to attract ash, and occasionally they'll attract chalices. And I'm just like, why do you people play this shit? <laughs> Um, one Rise Up, one Apex, and double Empen. I'm fine with four Tributes. I used to be on the hype train of three, uh, but no. Uh, I like four Tributes. Four Tributes is perfect. Um, at one time I did open up three Tributes in, uh, I think it was against the round six against Cody Angeloff. Uh, I was gonna lose that fucking game anyway, so it didn't even really matter. Uh, we're playing for our hand traps two copies of Ash Blossom, and three of the broke-ass D-Shifter. God, D Shifter is just like a, it's a fuck you card. Like, I open this against you and I hit you with it, you're losing the fucking game. Like, there's there's no way that you're winning. Um, 
for the spells, we're playing three copies of Pot of Prosperity. You need to play this card. Um, no offense. Uh, and then three copies of Pot of Duality. I've seen some builds that were playing like double Prosperity with one extra and triple Duality. I really don't like that because with my shitty luck, which I've realized over the years, I just have dog shit luck in Yu-Gi-Oh. Like that's just how it fucking is. Like I, I, I could take the best deck in the in the room and still go like X4 just because even if I know the deck inside and out, people are still going to just whip their dick out and smack me across the face with it just because I'm that's how bad my luck is. Um, so I don't like having the one X drive because I'd rather have one of six and just have that option all the time instead of hoping to hit two of three and it's like, it, it's just idiotic. So, uh, if you have money for Prosperities, definitely play Prosperities. Um, if not, then play X drives. Uh, then we're playing two copies of Book of Moon, uh, because, you know, my, my luck sucks, so we gotta get rid of Hand Trap somehow. Then we're playing three copies of Map. Such a good card. Three copies of Advent. Um, the last round Despia player had the fucking balls to tell me, gosh, this deck does too much shit. I wanted to throw him up against the fucking wall, because I'm like, you're out of your fucking mind. You're playing Despia with Adventure at DPE, and you have the balls to say that? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> um, one Unexplored Win, because it's broken. One Terraforming, because it also searches us Mystic Mind. This card is so busted. The dude, the, the round seven Despia dude was clearly getting pissed that I ran this card, because all he could do is just draw and pass. Um... Funny story about Mystic Mind, right? So, I'm going against Cody Angeloff in round six. And he has a Mirror Jade on board with, like, two back row. One of the back row is Brandon in red that I didn't know about. The other back row is something random that was irrelevant. So, I go draw for turn, activate Terraform, and grab Mystic Mind. And I think he'd already seen some of my Flunder cards because, like, a turn or two had passed the game. I don't remember what it was. I'm, I'm exhausted. I activate Mystic Mind. He chains the Mirror Jade to dump Albion. And he then chains Brandon in red to grab Despian Tragedy, or whatever Despian monster from his grave. Fuses with his Mirror Jade and two cards in his hand to make Guardian, Chimera, and Defense. The chain continues to resolve. Mirror Jade still has to banish a card, so he banishes his Guardian Chimera. I'm like, oh, so you cleared your board for me. And then I proceeded to activate a Magnificent Map over the Mystic Mine, and I won from there because I had, like, Robina and Eaglin in my hand. It was really delicious. I felt like a pro player in that moment. <laughs> and then we're playing one copy of Call by the Grave because... My luck with hand traps sucks a pair of booty booty butt cheeks. And then for the traps, we're playing three Imperm and one Featherstorm, or Featherstorm. One copy of Dreaming Town, three copies of Imperm. Some people were opting to play Featherstorm instead. I just like being able to interact with the opponent on their turn. Uh, in game three, uh, whenever I would go first if I lost the die roll, because I just lost every die roll except for the last round, which was just idiotic. Um, I would take out the Imperms and throw in Featherstorms. And it worked out perfectly because then I could also take out Mystic Mine and throw in a Feather Duster. Uh, there was one time that I misplayed where someone twin twistered my Feather Storm and I chained the Feather Storm. And I didn't search Feather Duster, but it didn't matter because I had won the game anyway. So for the extra deck, let's just go ahead and cover that real quick because this is irrelevant AF. Uh, Ince, Macaba, Nova, uh, Juggernaut Max, whatever, Dark, Gustav Max, Zeus. Uh, Attic Nister, another Attic Nister, Omega, Juggernaut Leave, another Zeus, uh, Downard, and Assembled Nightingale. We actually made Assembled Nightingale, Downard, and Zeus uh, round one against Jeremy because I had two Flunders on the board and I really didn't have anything else, so I was able to exceed them off into Nightingale, swing direct, and then make a Downer and make a Zeus, use the effect, use Baroness to negate, and then I detached again. He just rebuilt his board next turn. I'm like, Jeremy, let's let's not do this today. We're in round one. Let's let's not be playing these games. <laughs> uh, for the side deck, we're playing three drolls because I hate the fucking mirror, and these never came in at all. And then we're playing one feather duster, two twin twisters, which were pretty much my hate for Zombie World, because Zombie World is a bitch. And uh, Zombie World should be banned. <laughs> um, I, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But they, these these were clutch, especially the Feather Duster, since that they pop your Feather Storm, and then you just chain it, then you can just search Feather Duster. Um, three Dark Ruler and three Evenly. These came in all damn day, and these cards are so good. Um, the game plan was, was that whether I went first or second in game one, I would take out my two books and my call by, throw in three Dark Ruler, and then take out my three uh, Imperms, and throw in three Evenly, and that that would be my side. Uh, I could just keep everything else as is, because all I cared about at that point was just breaking your dog water board and proceeding to win the game. That's why I love going into this event with Flunderies, because it literally just came down to, do I have a good hand? Yes. Do you have a hand trap? No, you're going to lose the game. 
Um, and going along with that, we're playing three copies of Featherstorm. People actually had to read this card. I don't know why y'all had to read this card, because it's literally obvious. You can't activate monster effects, but I don't know. That The only person that really had to like read this a couple times was the last round in round seven against the Despia guy. And I guess he was just trying to stall me out when like we had 20 minutes left on the fucking round. So, guys, that's my matchups. Um, I hope that you enjoyed... I hope that, uh, you know, you take my build and, you know, perfect it and have fun with it if you want. Like I said, I did bubble. It is what it is. I mean, I really feel like I could have gone X2 and topped the event. So, but I will say what I have learned from this event, as salty and pissed off as I am, is that I definitely feel a lot more confident as a player. Like, the fact that I took Cody Angeloff to three games and would have won if he did not open Zombie World, I really feel accomplished in my own regard due to that like yes i wanted to top i feel like i should have topped um but things just did not work out in my favor but you know i feel like i've gone from a player who if i had to sit across from patrick hoban robbie cole capital g and play against these guys who talk about the game all the time and obviously play a lot that i wouldn't really stand a chance against them now i'm more like okay if i have to play against someone like jeremy mitchell cool you know you're piling probably the best deck in the room and you are a good player but I'm not looking at you as a player. I'm looking at your deck. You know, you you could be giving me the middle finger our whole match. I don't give a shit about that. I'm giving a shit about what kind of board are you making and what is it that your deck does. You know, you may do some unorthodox plays like I did throughout the day, like with the Mystic Mind Magnificent Map thing in order to bait stuff out. But that comes more from just being skillful with a deck. Um, and the fact that, you know, I was able to do very well, especially after losing round one and get four wins in a row with Flunder, a deck that can really brick hard. I was really proud of myself in that regard. So, guys, please let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.